To watch 8mm film or Super 8 film, you need a projector, you need a screen, you need a dark room, and you need patience to deal with the issues often associated with this format. And still, after that, you're stuck watching it at home with no easy way to share these family moments with loved ones who live elsewhere. Well, this is the Magnasonic Super 8 8 8mm film scanner. This is going to allow me to take film off of reels like this and make files that I can share with others. I'll be reviewing this Magnasonic coming up on Thrifty AV. Watching old home movies using a film projector is fun, but it's definitely not convenient. In fact, the projector I was using in the intro to this video, it's conked out on me. It's lost a belt and it will not play another movie until I get that belt replaced. But this video is not about film projectors. It's about a film scanner, specifically the Magnasonic Super 8 8 8mm film scanner in my hand here. Now the folks at Magnasonic were kind enough to send this over as a review sample. I consider review samples to be on loan, so if the folks at Magnasonic want this back, they can ask for it. I am not being paid for this review, and all opinions expressed in this video are my own. This thing's still in the box, and it's obvious that I need to get it out of the box. On the outside of the Magnasonic box, it says it converts Super 8 and 8 millimeters, so I'm glad that it does both formats and it converts them into video. It has a 2.3 inch LCD display and you do not need computer software. There's their website. Magnasonic is proud to state that they are an environmentally conscious company. All right, getting into the box, there's some protective foam on top here. Here is a take up reel, I believe. Okay. Here we have the power cable, an RCA video output cable, and this appears to be a USB cable, USB type A to mini, not micro USB on the other side. And here is the unit itself, protected with bubble wrap. And there it is, there's the 2.5 LCD screen with a little bit of plastic protection there. And here's a sticker providing a little bit of instruction on how to use the scanner. And here are two hub adapters for film reels with larger hubs here. And here is a cleaning cloth that should be safe for the light bed and for the lens on the scanner. And at the bottom of the box was the user manual, all in English. I'll be reading this off camera. You will have to provide your own SD card. It needs to be class four or better. This is class 10 and it needs to be 32 gigabytes or less. I've gone ahead and plugged it in. I'm going to power it up for the first time here. And there's the Magnasonic brand and the take up real spun a little bit. And you can see a little preview of the scanner. If I put my finger in front of it, you can see a little preview right there. SD card inserts into the back and it shut off when I put the SD card in. One of the real cool things about the Magnasonic is that it scans both regular 8mm and Super 8 film. Now most my mother's home movies are Super 8, but the oldest one that she has from 1967, this is regular 8. I'm going to go ahead and set the Magnasonic for regular 8 and scan this film. Just below the film gate, there's a switch to go between 8mm and Super 8. For this film, I need it on 8mm. I think it's great that the Magnasonic has this built-in 2.5 inch screen, but I'm going to be doing some video capture as I scan. So I have the output, the video output, hooked up to this capture device here, and that disables the internal screen when you have it hooked up to an external monitor. When threading the film up, there's a little dotted line guide on how to thread it up. Underneath the gate here, there's two little metal guides that you need to make sure that the film is in before you close it. 
I'm going to talk about the full menu later in this video, but I have the thing set, I think, optimally for this film. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. It says 3 inch, 5 inch, and 7 inch. This is a 5 inch reel. It's not quite full. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It says do not move the film. And it has started scanning. Obviously it's not scanning in real time. The frame rate for recording on regular 8mm was usually 16 frames per second. Super 8, it changed to 18 frames per second, but this is a regular 8. And it's scanning. Let's see how fast it's scanning. I'm counting 2 frames per second on this scan. So whatever the duration was on this film, uh, it, it's going to take 8 times as long to scan this as it would to play this on a movie projector. I want to talk a little bit about what's on the display here. This blinking red dot means that we are recording. The EV is the exposure value. I have it set to default zero. I can of course put gain or cut the exposure a little bit. I'm not sure what this uh, number is, but it's counting down. So I think it might have something to do with uh, the duration of the file or how much space is left on the card. Not sure. 8mm, that's the kind of film I'm scanning. If I switch to a Super 8, that'll, that'll change here. 5 inches, the real size, and I'm recording to the SD card. I'm not using uh, the USB cable hooked directly to a computer. We are approaching the end of this reel. It just came off of that spool, and then I'm going to hit the stop button. I've reversed the feed and take up reels and I don't have the film running through the gate right now. I just have it running along these two spools here and I'm using the fast forward feature to pull this reel back onto the original uh, feed reel. I transferred this reel from 1967 onto this SD card. I'm going to take a look at the footage and check out the file specs on my editing machine. Here is the footage from 1967. There's a little bit of light bleed here as if uh, the film was exposed to light unintentionally before it was developed. But otherwise this footage looks pretty good. I kept the 4x3 aspect ratio by putting letter boxes on the left and the right. I did slow it down to 0.8 so that the motion would look a little more natural. I think the speed looks good here. Look at the sharpness on this regular 8 and look at the color on those flowers. This does not look like it was shot 55 years ago. This film has held up quite well. Uh, this is some pretty neat footage that my parents shot here. Now they did some shooting you know uh, out of the car window some of it's a little bit shaky. They didn't exactly have uh, uh, image stabilization back then. And there is some dirt specks and such on the film at this point. Uh, I probably should have cleaned the film. You can also see some smudges on it. That is related to the light bed on the scanner needing to be cleaned. Just this one reel running through this gate has left behind some residue here. There's still some specks on the light bed. I'm going to hit with some air. <laughs> All right, that looks better. Checking out the media info for the file created by the Magnasonic. The format is MPEG-4. The overall bitrate is 9924, which is pretty good for 1080p. It's the AVC video codec. High profile, which minimizes artifacts. The bit rate is 9831 kbps for the video. The width is 1440 by 1080, which is a 4 to 3 aspect ratio 1080 signal. Frame rates on these old movie projectors was not always standardized. This creates a 20 frame per second file, which is a pretty good compromise. If the motion doesn't look right, you can make adjustments in post-production. Color space is YUV, chroma subsampling is 420, bit depth is 8, it is progressive scan, which you want for a film transfer. The Magnasonic does not record audio from film, so there is no audio information on this file. I was really impressed with the quality of the scan that the Magnasonic provided using 8mm footage. 
I look forward to seeing what it can do with Super 8, but first I want to dig into the menu a little bit. All menu items are accessed using the menu button, the left right arrow, and the OK button. Let's go ahead and hit menu. The first menu item is playback, and if I hit OK on playback, it's going to bring up the most recent file I recorded on the SD card. If I hit OK again, it will play that file back. Hitting the OK button again will pause it, and at this point, if I hit the menu button, I have three choices. I can return to viewing the video, I can delete the video out if I don't want to keep it, or I can protect the video from being deleted. Okay, if I hit the menu button from here, it's going to take me out of the menu and just show me the frame that I'm currently on on the scanner. If I hit menu again, it brings me back into the menu. Fast forward is really just for me to re-spool the thing. You can also fast forward and not scan if you're trying to get to a different location on the film reel. You do need to take the film out of the film gate to use the fast forward. The next menu item is exposure. I uh, scan that whole first video at zero. Uh, you can cut or boost up to two, which I don't know if that's two stops or what, but I found that the default of zero scan pretty good. If I find some film that's overexposed, I might drop it some, and if I find some film that needs gain, I might boost it some, but zero has worked pretty good so far. The next menu item is frame adjust, and this one's pretty important. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now that brings up a frame. Looking at that frame, it has X, Y, and W. X and Y work just like X and Y do in math. X is the horizontal adjustment, Y is the vertical adjustment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to W because W is like the zoom adjustment. And it'll be easier to see what X and Y do when I'm zoomed all the way out. Now you can see not just the frame I'm on, but the prior frame and the next frame. And you'll see what X does. If I move left, it moves the frame left. If I hit right, it moves the frame right. My goal is to center up on that image to where it's perfectly within the frame. Y will go up or down using the arrow keys, just like X did. And I'm gonna zoom back in I think I'm catching everything left and right now. Now I want up and down to be looking good. All right, I'm seeing the, the bottom of the previous frame and I don't wanna see that. Now I'm seeing the top of the next frame and I don't wanna see that. I advanced a frame, it looks a little different now. I think I need to zoom slightly in on the W. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get this. Sharpness. When sharpness is set to high, it almost looks artificial to me. I prefer the medium sharpness. That just looks more natural to me than the high sharpness. Let's go back in the menu. Here are the language options. I will be keeping it in English. I'm not gonna be using the USB in this video. I'll be saving that for future videos. You can format the card and you can go back to default settings and that is the last menu option. So far I've been very pleased with the Magnasonic film scanner. It did a better job with that regular 8 film than uh, my other scanner that shall remain unnamed. But I have not scanned a Super 8 film yet. Uh, I haven't used the USB connection on the back of the unit and I have not done a side-by-side -side comparison with my other film scanner. But this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to save those topics for a part two that will occur later this summer. If there's anything else about the Magnasonic you want me to cover in that video, say so in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thank you to the folks at Magnasonic for sending over their film scanner. There is an Amazon affiliate link in the description if you're interested in owning one of these. 
as well as a link to a blog about this device on the Magnasonic website. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons and members for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.